Hello everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about what is science. Now, most of us have an idea of what is science. We have a feeling when something's not very scientific, but sometimes it can be difficult to tell. The foil prevents the aliens from reading my thoughts. So in order for something to be a part of science, it has to follow these three rules. It has to have natural causality, consistency in time and place, and common perception. So what does natural causality mean? So in order for something to be a part of science, it means it can't be supernatural. It has to follow the rules of nature. I'll give you an example. So God is supernatural. God does not follow the rules of nature. He is above those rules. He doesn't follow the rules of physics. He can do anything he wants. So because he doesn't follow the rules of nature, we can't use science to talk about him. We can't use science to argue the existence of God. We can't use science to argue against the existence of God because he's supernatural, he goes against the rules of nature. This pertains to anything that is supernatural. So for example, ghosts. Ghosts are supernatural, so ghosts are not a part of science. We can't use science to explain ghosts because they don't follow our rules of physics. Consistency in time and place means that the rules of nature are constant no matter what time or what location you're in. What was true then is true now. What is true over there is true over here. We can't say things like, last week for five minutes, the rules of physics were different and I was able to levitate. Now, I can't do it anymore because it's only during that moment. Because the rules of nature have to be consistent. Science operates on the assumption that humans perceive things in the same way. We call this common perception. We have to make this assumption because in science, if you collect data and you run a test, your data and your test have to be replicable. Otherwise, it's not considered a good test. And this is how we avoid someone saying things like, well, only I can collect that data. Here's the evidence, but you can't do it. Only I can do it. Only I have that ability. Well, that doesn't make sense because if one person can collect the data, then other people should be able to collect it. And so we call that common perception. So let me ask you, are ghost hunter shows scientific? This is the fifth week in a row. I've heard strange sounds coming from the kids' room at night. I'm gonna go investigate. I like to think of this in simpler terms. I just ask two questions. Is it testable and can others repeat the test? If the answer to both those questions is yes, then it's probably scientific. So this brings me to my last point. I wanna to talk to you about the difference between being convinced of something and believing in something. And this is a really important distinction when we talk about science. Not that it's bad to believe in something, but when it comes to science, we should work towards being convinced of something. So the difference is, to be convinced of something, it means someone presented you with evidence and that evidence was convincing enough for you to think that that is true. Now just because you're convinced of something doesn't mean you can't change your mind later. So if you present me information and data and it convinces me that what you're talking about is true, I can say, yeah, I'm convinced that that is true. And later someone else might give me different data and I can change my mind. That is completely okay. And that is a great thing about science, is that we should always be willing to change our mind based on the data. Now to believe something means that you are not presented with sufficient evidence to be convinced, but you still think it's true. I hope you enjoyed talking about what is science, and I will see you next time.